Hello, I'm Matthew Weinstock with Hospitals and Health Networks with a preview of the October issue. I'm joined right now by staff writer Marty Stepniak, who wrote the cover story of the October issue, taking a look at the growth of retail health clinics. Marty, thanks for being with me today. Thanks, Matt. So tell me a little bit about who the major players are in the retail health clinic game. We see a lot of them pro- popping up across the country now. I think really it's Walgreens and CVS and everyone else is sort of at the bottom looking up at them. I mean, those two alone represent about three quarters of the retail clinic market with 1,100 locations and counting. They're in over 20 states. And um, CVS alone wants to add about 150 locations this year and double its size by 2015. So those are the two that are getting a lot of attention. Uh, Target and Little Clinic also are uh, making some waves, but it's really those two at the top. And so, Marty, as you report in your story, Walgreens and others have made some noise by moving into areas that they weren't doing before. They're getting beyond the diagnosing earaches and providing flu shots, right? Some areas that maybe hospitals and doctors have been doing for a long time. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah, Walgreens especially uh, gained some attention in April when they announced they were going to start treating and diagnosing and helping with chronic conditions, uh, something they had, hadn't done before. But um They're not going to be doing it alone. They do want health systems and and their physicians to help them with this, and they are trying to coordinate records and um, coordinate care with those health systems. So should a hospital executive be nervous if they see a Walgreens clinic opening up across the street? I'd say mostly no. I mean, one expert told us this is a pretty big market. It it represents about $5 billion for these low-acuity conditions. But at the same time, as we know, there's a primary care shortage and Hospitals maybe don't have the doctor workforce to take up all these all these conditions. And um, I mean, talking to the CMO of Walgreens, he insists they're not trying to compete with with hospitals and health systems. They're not going to become Walgreens health system. They want to be a partner and they want to be a, a piece of the sort of uh, care continuum. So again, in, in your research, as you were talking to the hospital executives, why would they want to partner with the Walgreens? What's in it for them? Well, I think it's it's about getting your name out there, getting your brand out there. I mean, as the CMO of Walgreens told us, these stores are already built. They're on very popular street corners in, in dozens of different cities. And when they partner with a health system, both CVS and Walgreens, they put the hospital's logo up in their clinic and they're coordinating with them. And, uh, you know, it's a way to get referral points and, and get more patients into your system. And so if you can't partner with them for whatever reason it may be, what do you do? I think there's there's lots of options out there. I mean, some health systems are trying to take on the retail clinic game by themselves. Uh, Bellin Health System, who we talked to in Green Bay, has already opened, I think, 20 retail clinic locations in several different states. Some are sort of thinking outside of the box. Uh, health Partners in Minnesota has sort of developed a an online clinic model where a patient could pay 40 bucks and get I think it was 40 or so uh, different diagnoses for um, these lower acuity conditions. And, you know, there's nothing that stops your doctors from trying to find uh, ways to make their services more convenient. And that's what has made these clinics so attractive to patients, whether it's having later hours, weekend hours, or offering more transparent pricing for those patients. Well, great, Marty. Thanks a lot for talking about the story. Thank you. The October issue also includes the next installment in our series on the diabetes epidemic. In this article, contributing writer Jerry Aston delves into the new reimbursement models that hospitals and insurers are experimenting with when it comes to managing chronic disease. Also, I had the opportunity to interview Helen Darling, the longtime head of the National Business Group on Health. Darling points out that business leaders are demanding more transparency and value from the healthcare system. At the same time, those business leaders are pushing harder for wellness with their own employees and leaning more heavily on consumer-directed health plans. Finally, the October issue includes another in our executive dialogue series. We gathered a panel of hospital leaders to discuss the challenges they face in managing a multi-generational workforce. So be sure to check out the October issue of h H&H. I'm Matthew Weinstock. Thanks for tuning in.